What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another OBS tutorial for you. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the best streaming settings if you're trying to use your new Ryzen 9 5000 processor. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. So we're in the new OBS 27, which was released just on June 1st of 2021. This new version of OBS is better in a lot of different ways than version 26, but there are plenty of videos comparing those two out already, so I won't be wasting your time with that. Today, we're gonna tell you about the best streaming settings you can get using your processor. So let's go over to settings. On the left-hand side, we see all of our standard options right here. We're gonna choose video. The video settings are important because it all changes depending on what type of game you're playing, on what monitor you're using, on what refresh rate you have, things like that. Some people game on 2K and 4K monitors, but the golden rule I like to use when streaming or recording is use 1080p. And that means scale it down to 1080p if you're using a higher resolution. So I usually game in 2K, so for my base canvas resolution, I would change that to 2K. But when I'm recording or streaming, I want to downscale that to 1080p or 720p. Downscaling makes it easier for people viewing your stream or recording to watch it, and it also makes it easier in your computer to make that stream or recording. If you have a really good PC with a big monitor and you want people to easily watch it, make your base canvas your monitor's resolution and your output scaled 1080p, 1920 by 1080. If you have a lower end computer, you want to probably change your base canvas to 1080p, game in 1080p, and then downscale it to 720p. That'll make it a lot easier on lower end PCs. Now, if you are downscaling, we'll see downscale filters right here, and then we have four options. The top one is bilinear, then we got area, then we got bicubic, then we got Langzos. Bilinear is the fastest output. It's easier on lower end computers, but it is not super, super accurate, and it gets a little bit blurry every once in a while. That's for lower end PCs. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Langzos, which is a really good sharpened downscale, and that is pretty intensive on the computer, so you have to have a good computer to choose this option, or you'll get dropped frames and things like that. So if you have a pretty average computer, you can choose area or bicubic, it doesn't really matter on that one. So I'm just gonna choose area. And then we have common FPS value. Now typically, you're playing a game in about 60 frames per second if you have a 60 hertz monitor. The end user watching your stream is never gonna see it in that high of a frame rate, ever. You wanna use 60, that's gonna look great. So for good PCs, I recommend 60. If you're dropping frames and your PC is struggling a little bit, you can drop it down to 48 to get a still real nice look. But for weaker end PCs, you want to drop that down to 30, which is half a 60, which is the standard refresh monitor rate of the average person who has a computer monitor. So that being said, if you have a good computer, choose 60. If you have a medium-ish computer and you're dropping frames, choose 48. If you have a low-end computer, choose 30. So we're just going to choose 30 and hit apply. And now we're going to go over to the output tab on the left. And then we'll see four tabs at the top here, streaming, recording, audio, and replay buffer. And since this is a streaming tutorial, we're going to stay in the streaming tab and we're going to be choosing the X264 encoder, which is streaming settings using your processor. If you go to your encoder and you drop it down, you may see a different encoder. And this is for my graphics card. But let's just say I have a really awesome new processor and a really old graphics card. I'm going to benefit from using X264 for streaming rather than trying to condense it all into an old NVIDIA encoder. So I'm going to choose X264. We're going to keep rescale output unchecked because we're already rescaling in the video tab. Under here, we have rate control. We have four options, CBR, ABR, VBR, and CRF. The only two you need to worry about when streaming using your processor is CBR or VBR. You want to choose VBR if you have a static scene that you're streaming, like if you're live streaming a wedding and, you know, there's just people walking up but you have one still shot on a tripod looking at the ceremony then a lot of those pixels and frames aren't changing very often. And so VBR will adjust the bitrate accordingly. But if you have a fast moving game that you're streaming, like a first person shooter, then you want to use CBR because the frames and pixels are always changing every single second. So for this tutorial sake, I'm going to use CBR. We have a bitrate number down here. Now, this one highly depends on the type of internet you have. If you have really poor internet, really low speed internet, you wanna keep this number as low as possible. But if you have really good internet, like gigabit internet, you can keep this number you know, fairly high. The lowest number I'd ever wanna go when streaming is 2500 kbps. That is for bare bones, decent looking stream for poor internet. But if you have pretty good internet, I never really go above 7500. Sometimes I keep it around 6,000, but the maximum I'd ever go is 10,000. So you're gonna have to play with those numbers and see which one works really good for you. 
I'm gonna keep this one at 6,000, just for this tutorial's sake. We don't need to check custom buffer size. Keyframe interval. If you have a low end computer, you wanna keep this at zero because it's gonna go ahead and change your keyframes between one and two, depending on your scene automatically to really help your stream thrive. But if you know you have an okay computer or even a really good computer, you can keep it at one for fast pace action moving. But if you have a slower paced thing, like that wedding thing I was talking about, you can change your keyframe interval to two. So I'm gonna keep it at one. CPU usage, this is pretty self-explanatory. The faster option you choose, the faster your encoding is gonna be, but the less accurate it's gonna be. So basically, it's gonna encode really fast, but you may see some blockiness. So the lower you go, the more intense the encoding task is on your processor, but the better the stream will look. I never personally go below medium or slow because you really can't notice a quality jump between these two, but you will notice the performance hit on your processor, and that will in turn affect your game, affect your stream, and just look kind of terrible at that point. So I always keep mine at medium or slow. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose medium for mine. And then we have profile. We have three options right here, or you can choose none, but essentially you never really like to worry about baseline. And then you really can't tell that much of a difference between main and high. Choose main if you think the majority of your audience is gonna be watching your stream on a cell phone and choose high if you think the majority of your audience is gonna be watching on a computer screen. Personally, I always choose high. Tune, we don't have to worry about any of these at all. We're gonna keep it at none. And then we don't have to worry about any of these X264 options. These are custom commands that can help out, but once you start adding custom commands, you're gonna start breaking the whole chain of processes that OBS uses. It could benefit you to use some custom commands, but it also could really hurt. So after you're done with that, hit apply, and then go ahead and test your stream, see what it looks like. You can always come back into the settings and change these values, but I always recommend you use the lowest, weakest settings first for lower end computers and go up from there. Because if you start high and it's overloading your computer and whatnot, you're gonna have to start adjusting these things little bits at a time, and it's gonna make your stream look terrible. You're gonna drop frames, have encoding lag. So I always recommend just start low and work your way up till you find the perfect settings for you. And there you have it. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom.